Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. And, and please, I hope you listen tonight. I hope you really listen tonight. Please listen, listen. God has shifted your ground. If you keep walking the same ground, you're not going to be in step with God. God has shifted the ground. That means that he shifted the play. He's, he's, the shift, the shift is not happening. The shift happened. It happened already. Whether you're aware of it or not is dependent on what you believe. I'll take it a step further. Whether or not you know the shift happened is dependent on what you have received. And so the ground that you may be playing on right now at this moment, you may be in step with God or you may be out of step. And so I believe that the word God's given me tonight for our church is that it's time to cooperate with the shift. Stop complaining. Stop doubting the shift. When shift happens, doubts happen. Fear happens. Uncertainty happens. You cannot question the, uns the uncertainty of God's shift. The shift is not comfortable. It's an uncomfortable shift because God is trying to step you into something new. But we have to get this. Now, I was asking myself, how do I, how do I deliver this shift? How do I explain it? And so please listen. Um, I'm going to preach as fast as I can quickly, but I want to make sure that I, I drive one point tonight for us because I want us to step into the shift. And this shift is coming with many blessings. This shift is coming with many breakthroughs. This shift is coming with, with great miracles. And, and there's, there's things that God wants to do in us, in our families, in our children. But you know what? Let me tell you something. If this church is your home church, there's a shift happening at Elevate. I'm telling you. And you can either be a part of it or stay behind. It's, there's a shift. It's a God shift. God's elevating this church. God's expanding this church. God keeps putting new things in us. And it's uncomfortable because it means more responsibility for us. But we can't be afraid of responsibility when we know it's a God shift. And so look at your neighbor and say, let's pay attention tonight. Here's my one point I'm going to drive tonight. Ready? I'm going to put it on the screen, and let's read this together. Ready? One, two, three. When you understand the nature of a thing, its behavior will never surprise you. When you understand the nature of a thing, when you understand the nature of a thing, its behavior will never surprise you. Please stay with me, because if not, you'll miss it, and... The reason I want to talk about this as I was preparing is because we're doing Elevate Nights. And maybe some of you are not used to this nature. Maybe some of you are not used to our behavior of give God a shout of praise, right? And everybody shouts. And so if you do not understand the nature, then the behavior is going to surprise you. Jesus had a nature. And so, if you can't understand the nature of something, you will never be caught off guard. If you, if you understand the nature of something, you won't be caught off guard. If you lack understanding of the nature of something, you're going to be surprised. And you won't shift. You won't shift. For example, I never expect a cat to bark. If your cat barks, 
you better go put that cat on TV because you'll make some serious money. No, I, you can't. It's not the nature of a cat to bark. The nature of a cat is to purr. The nature of a cat is a love-hate relationship for you cat lovers out there. Is it not true? Sometimes they're like all against you, right? And other times they just want to hide from you. So you're looking, for, you think your cat literally ran away from home. I know because I have friends that have cats and that's, cats are crazy. And so when you understand the nature of a cat, you don't place a false expectation on that cat. Now a dog is different. You know the nature of a dog. The nature of a dog is opposite the cat. The dog just starts going, woof, woof. Who let the dogs out? Right? And they just get out. I know my dog. I, I got three of them. They're crazy. Man, bear. Oh, my God. I can't even be sitting alone anywhere without bear. Like, literally, and he, he's this huge Rottweiler. He's a German Rottweiler, so he's big. But he jumps on me like he's this baby, this child. So his nature is to love and lick, and his saliva gets all over your clothes. It's nasty. And then I got two crazy dogs named Wallace and Vader, and they're crazy. They're nuts. And they talk to you, too. In bark language. So when I get home, I, I already have an expectation that they're going to literally love me to death. I have the, that's the expectation. That's what dogs do. They're loyal. They're faithful. That's their nature. Ladies, don't trip about the nature of a man. When you understand the nature of a man, you will never, ever be surprised again. Ladies, men, we men, and men... When I say what I'm going to say, you just give me a big amen. Us men, we only have one switch. On or off. Men, what are you doing? Nothing. What do you mean, what do you, what do you mean you're not doing nothing? What have you been thinking about? I'm, I'm not thinking. I'm off. Yes or no, men? And then ladies like, well, but what are you thinking? What, what's going through your mind? Nothing. That's impossible. What do you mean you can't be thinking nothing? No, it's possible. I ain't thinking nada. The nature of a man is that us men, we don't grow up past eight years old. That's the reality. We don't. Ladies, stop trying to, you need to grow up. We don't grow up. I mean, think about it. Like, I like drones. Anybody here like drones? Do you guys remember when I did an illustration with a drone? I almost killed some church people. It was amazing. It was like going all across. I almost hit somebody in the back, but it's all good. But you know what? Like, when I play with a drone, I call, look, I, I call my family, check this out. Oh, my God. And they look at me like, good job, Mauricio. Good job. Like, it's an eight-year-old boy having to hear, good job. Good. You know how to fly a drone. Yay. And so you can't expect something out of the nature of a man that just may not, may not ever step up to the, the level of, of person. Not that we can't change, but, but just know that there's an on-off. However, women help us, Jesus. When you understand the nature of a woman, they're like, they're like Boeing 747s. They're like the cockpit of Boeing 747. You know why? Because a, a Boeing 747, have you, have you guys ever been on a plane and when the, when the plane lands, the captain comes out and he always greets everybody as they leave? And I know because I'm always on planes. And so I'm like, oh, my God. It's like the whole thing has like a million buttons. That's women for you. It's like you need a multi, you know, you need to know like multi-languages just to, uh, understand it but you need an interpreter to understand them there's just so many so so when you understand the nature of something its behavior will never surprise you but isn't it true that as the church as the body of Christ we often don't understand the nature of God therefore we question it Therefore, when someone 
gets healed and and they come up here and they came in pain and we lay hands on them and they start saying I'm pain free I was and then there's some people like yeah right and we're, yeah that, nothing happened you don't understand it you don't understand the nature of God therefore you can't understand why behave why we behave the way we behave are you listening church so let's break this down quickly because I want to go back into worship how about you and just see what God speaks to us tonight prophetically. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27. And before I read this, isn't it true that the nature of the world is fear, doubt, unbelief, disappointment, what else? Throw some out. Let's engage. Shame. Guilt. guilt. Condemnation. Fear of failure. Fear of success. What else? Say it out loud. Don't worry about it. That's our nature here. Let's go. Criticism, insecurities, lack of identity. So ang but but think about it. That that's the old nature. So if you're struggling constantly with those issues, then, then you have to start asking yourself, of what nature am I? Look at this, Genesis chapter 1, verse 27 through 20, it says, so God created man. Who created man? Who created man? He created them in his own what? Image. Another, another version or another way to say it is he created us in his own nature. In the image and what? Likeness of God. He created him. Male and? He created them. And God what? Blessed them. Granting them certain authority. Notice it's certain authority. So don't ever think that you got all authority. You don't got all authority. God has all authority. You just have certain authority. So that's why know your authority. When you're in church, know your authority. Know who's over you. Respect who's over you. Honor who's over you. Know the authority that God has placed in your life. When you respect the authority that you can see, you'll respect the authority you can't see. That goes for your workplace, your bosses, the people you work for. Respect that authority. And so God even has a, 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 an authority um, what would you call that? A, um, a what? Hierarchy, Hierarchy sure. <laughs> That's a pretty heavy word. It's a hierarchy, praise God. No, it, it, there, there's, there's, a, there's a level of authority that God places in, in, in heaven. There's God the Father, God the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit. There's an order. So you got to know the order of your authority. So he says, and so he granted them certain authority, and he said to them, be what? Fruitful. Be what? Fruitful. What's your nature? Your nature is to be what? Fruitful. And your nature is to be what? Fruitful. And multiply. You are to what? Be fruitful and to what? Multiply. And fill the earth and subjugate it, putting it under your what? Power. So that means that that God's saying, you, Mauricio, you, Elevate Church, you have been made in my image and my likeness, and you are my nature. And he says, and you have been blessed by me to be fruitful in every... That means we are to be fruitful in family, be fruitful in work, be fruitful in health, and we are to multiply and have lots of babies, right? No, just kidding, no. But we're to multiply. In other words, everything we touch, it should multiply. Your workplace should multiply. Your, your career should multiply. Your, your, your family, every, everything should multiply. Uh, in prosperity, in joy, in peace, and in love, it should multiply. Uh, we should multiply in generosity. We should multiply in gifting, right? We should multiply in call. We should be multiplying. You know what I'm saying? Multiply. We're going from glory to glory. And God says, I bless you to be fruitful. God's blessed you. 
And so he's saying, I made man and woman to have my image. But how many know that there are two natures in men? The first nature is the old you. The one before Jesus Christ. The one who used to be addicted. The one who used to be angry, bitter, resentful, unforgiving. The one who used to be doubting God. The one that one that used to be self selfish, the one that used to be arrogant, prideful. That's, that's the first nature that you and I were. The second nature is the new nature. He said, you are new in Christ Jesus. That means the new nature forgives. The new nature loves. The new nature has faith, hope, long-suffering. The new nature believes the best, sees the best. The new nature desires more of God. The new nature is looking and seeking for the divine purpose of God for their life. The new nature is hungry for God's will for your life. And the new nature wants, wants to feel God's presence. The new nature is hungry and is thirsty for more of God's word. And so when we don't have that hunger and that thirsting for that new nature, then we're still in the old nature. He said, all things have passed. Behold the new nature. And, and so I, I, the reason I'm saying there's a shift is because maybe there are some areas in your life that you have yet to be born again in that we can become born again. But sometimes our shame is what keeps us from being born again in a specific area because we all got a past. And our past keeps dictating and determining the shift. And so I think that we have to come back to the place where we say, you know what, I don't care if that person forgives me or not. God forgives me and therefore I'm coming into my new nature with them or without them i'm not waiting for them i'm coming into jesus amen and so that's the new nature we have faith we have hope we're a new person in christ jesus i didn't give this to the uh, media as i was driving over here I, I i found another verse in james chapter 1 verse 6 through 8 you can go to your bibles if you have a phone use your phone for Bible Gateway if you use that app or use our church app. We have a Bible on our church app. But don't, don't come here without a Bible. Amen? Amen? James chapter 1. Are you there? James chapter 1. And I want you to look at this in verse 6 because here's the deal. If, if, we, don't, if we don't start putting on the new nature, if we don't start focusing on... And how many know that, that every single one of us here, there's something that we need to change in? Amen? So, so that's, that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. That means that God is constantly helping us change. That's why he says, work out your salvation daily with what? Fear and trembling. So it's a daily transformation. And so it says in verse 6 through 8, it says, but when you ask, you must believe. You must not doubt. That's because a person who doubts is like a what? A wave of the sea. The wind blows and tosses them around. In other words, you're just like, psh, you're just everywhere. You're just like, bang. When you don't know how to believe God, you're just, you're, you're like a wave being tossed. You're everywhere. Like one moment you believe, the next moment you don't. Look what he says. They shouldn't expect to receive anything from them. In other words, God's saying, hey, listen, when you believe me, my nature is to give you the desires of your heart. And let me tell you something. The desires of your heart is not the selfishness desires that we have. The desires of your heart that God wants to fulfill is when you're finally so embedded in God's word that you crave his will, not yours. And then he says, and when you have my nature, then you have the capacity to receive what I want to give you. But when you're selfish, when, when you're, uh, when you're uh, prideful, when you're arrogant, when, when you're doubting, don't expect to receive anything. God is clear, isn't he? He's very, he, when he says it, he's like, man, this is what I'm saying. He says, they shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord. This kind of person can make up their, they can't make up their mind. They can't make up their mind. 
You see the two natures? There's a battle. It's, it's called double-mindedness. In other words, like, yeah, I believe God, but I don't believe he can do it. And you don't have to say it. You can just begin to feel it inside. Like, like when you walk into a hospital room and someone is, is in a coma and, and, and the report says that this person is dead. That's, that's where you have to be careful that the old nature doesn't try to stick up its ugly little head. But that at that moment you say, no, wait a minute. I've been made in the image and likeness of God. And I'm going to speak to this mountain. And I'm going to believe that, that God is going to raise this person up from the dead. I'm going to believe that God's going to change this situation. I'm going to believe that God is already orchestrating people that are going to keep coming here and speaking life to this person who's laying on the sick bed. You see, that's the nature of God. So when you understand the nature of God, then you start behaving like Jesus. But when you don't understand the nature of God, you behave like you. I behave like me. And so put that verse, did you, guys, did you guys find the verse for me or no? They did? No? You guys could have looked it up for me. Is that cool? Okay. It says, and this kind of person can't make up their mind. Are you someone here that you're always, you just can never make up your mind? One moment you believe, the next moment you don't. One moment you're in, the next moment you're not. Are, are you double-minded? Or are you confident in what God said to you? Are you questioning the shift or are you getting in step with the shift and saying, you know, God, I don't like it, but not my will. Your will be done because I'm in your nature. Therefore, I'm going to behave like your nature. Is this too deep? He says they can never decide what to do. It's just they just can't decide. Like we have a, an encounter with God like this, and, and here's what happens. We get into it, and then all of a sudden, it's so easy to default into the person that you really are, the old nature. Like you're in this environment, you're like, yes, yes. And, and, and sometimes you're waiting for a movement with a group of people. God's saying, listen, I don't need a group of people. I just need you to be revived. Stop trying to follow a group and just, just rise up and, and, and let there be a personal revival in your life and watch what I'll do. We're too man-dependent than, than, than God-dependent. Jesus was not dependent on his disciples. He was dependent in prayer to his Father God. That's where his help came from. We're too dependent on whether or not we have the right people, the right, the right team. The right. No, God is going to get me through this. I don't know how this is going to happen, but God's going to give, God's going to fulfill every single purpose and plan for my life. Amen? It's not based on, 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 on a group of people. It's not based on the work I have. It's not based on my paycheck. It's not based in the ministry. It's based on my God. And when God wants to do something in me and through me, he's going to have his way. But I got to come into the nature of God because I've been made in his image and I'm like him. So shouldn't we be finding out more about what God thinks about our nature? If you're double-minded, you begin to behave like it, huh? Go to John 14, 12 through 13. Look at your neighbor and say, hey. And say like that, say, hey. No, look at your neighbor and say, hey. But say what's the matter, like, Hey. Not like that, okay? Now you're being like, hey. hey. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. No, not like that. Say, 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 say to your neighbor, hey, listen, uh, God's not looking for double agents. Got too many double agents in the church. One minute they're for you, the next minute they're against you. It's called, it's called the enemies of the camp. Well, that's real good, huh, Terry? Man, we just got to believe that, huh? I love Terry. Terry's a good friend. He's hanging out with us tonight. Awesome, Terry. And then Spencer. Spencer, wave over there. Spencer's hanging out with us tonight. Thank you, Spencer, for being with us. So good. Spencer. Good, good friends, good people here. No double agents, right? Okay. Here we go. John 14, verse 12 through 13, quickly. It says this, most assuredly. In other words, man, I'm telling you the truth. This is Jesus. I'm telling you, most assuredly, without a doubt, confidently telling you this. 
I say to you, I'm telling you, I'm being clear with you, that he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also. And greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father, that, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Think about it. Jesus saying, hey, listen, Elevate Church, I'm telling you without doubt that if you believe me, you will not only have my nature, you will behave like me. You will act like me. You will talk like me. You will speak to the Father like me. By the way, this is a quick commercial. This Sunday we start a new series called 50 Shades of Prey. <laughs> Amen. 50 Shades of Prey. Don't miss. It's going to be really good. And so he says, he says, and greater works than these you will do. Because I, I've done my great works in three and a half years. And it's not that you're going to be greater than Jesus. It's that you're going to do so much more with the lifespan that you have. He only had three and a half years of life in this ministry. But you and I, we have 60, 70, 80 years. And God's saying throughout those years, you're going to do some great stuff. Amen. We're going to do some great stuff. We're doing great stuff. But when you are double-minded, don't expect to receive anything. You got to stay long enough for God to show you when it's uncomfortable. Because if you can't be faithful over little, how do you expect for God to be faithful over much? It's not in his nature. His nature is faithful. His nature is power. His nature is healing. His nature is prayer. His nature is faith. That's your nature. So I'm preparing us. We're going to go through this metamorphosis of change. And this year, 2019, you and I will be walking in the fullness nature of Almighty God. And we're going to behave accordingly. And that's going to take some time. Not too long. Because some of you are, are, are maybe a quarter of the way of your metamorphosis. There's some change in 2019. God, but you're, you're changing. But it, but it requires your cooperation. It, it, it means you got to, you, there's going to be an expectation on you from us at Elevate Church. You know why? Because you've been made in his image and you're like him. No more, I, well, I can't serve. Why can't you serve? Well, you know, I got work. Well, everybody here has work. Get connected. Well, I, 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 can't get, I got kids. Okay? A lot of people got kids here. All right, let's bring the ties off. Oh, I don't know. I can't bring ties off. Why not? I just don't believe. Stop being double-minded. Trust God. We're going to build. We're, we're gonna, this elevator church is going to expand. We're gonna, it's time to build. The question is, will you receive it? And will you believe it with us? You're going to be like, okay, <laughs> I like going to church, but don't talk to me about building. Because building's going to cost us. Amen? Amen. Revival is going to take place in this church. Amen? And, and it's already happening, but we got to shift into, we got to shift into God's gear. I did a series a few months ago called Shift Happens. Go listen to it. This prepares you, reminds you. Amen? And so... That's his nature. Worship team, can you come on up, please? If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.